Okay, hello everyone, welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today we're going to be creating the uh, Dark Souls elevator, and this is pretty much the shape of an Archimedes screw. So I'm going to try my best to uh, copy this shape. Okay, so what you want to do is start out with a cube, uh, and then use 7 on your numpad to go to your top view, and press 5 to go from perspective to orthographic. If you don't have a numpad, you can go on Edit Preferences and then head over on to Input and use Emulate Numpad to use a top row of numbers on your keyboard as a numpad. Okay, so starting with this cube, uh, whatever is left over is going to be the radius of our of our kind of elevator shaft or Archimedes screw, which is what the shape is technically called. So let's move it, let's select it and move it up in the Y by using GY. And then I can use control to lock it into uh, one meter increments. So it looks like it's roughly two thirds the size of the radius. So if our radius is two, sorry, it's 1.5 times bigger than the size of the radius. So if our radius is two, then this should be around three, three meters wide. So if we move it up here, let's see, this is roughly 3.5 meters up. And then we can scale it in the Y, 1.5. And now we have something that's 3 meters wide and exactly 2 meters above this. So perfect. Then what we can do is move it over in the X direction. So GX, uh, 1 meter. Oh, whoops. I seem to have moved it up by accident. So to move it down, I'm just going to do G. Actually, I can just set this to 0. Okay, perfect. So now it's back on the ground. Okay, and it's the fins are very thin, so I'm going to scale it in the Z to around 0 0.1. And this should be good for our basic shape. Okay, so the next step here is to go into edit mode and select this face. And we're actually going to, after going back to top view, we're actually going to move it into the other face by moving it exactly negative two meters to the left on the x-axis. Now, without deselecting it, head over here to your pivot point and switch it to your 3D cursor. And now, by using R and being the top view, we can press, we can use R to rotate it around 20 degrees, and then left click to confirm that. And then now what we want to do is we want to move it up to get that kind of upward spiral shape. Otherwise, it'll just be flat on the Z level. So it looks like the slope of this is pretty high. So uh, since it's we rotated 20 degrees, 365 by 20 is 18. So whatever uh, we move it up by, by the time it completes the spiral, it's going to be 18 times that. So let's try... Um, 0.4 meters for now. So after I could just use a sub menu to um, specify it to be 0.4 meters since it doesn't increment uh, nicely in place while using control that time. And that sub menu will pretty much pop up after you do any transformation. Okay, so we're almost done with that. Before we continue, just make sure to delete these uh, faces. So just use 3 to go face select mode. Select it and hit X. Delete that face, X, delete that face, and now we can see that it's hollow. This is so that when we use the ray modifier, it won't uh, have faces in between each iteration of the object, because that's just needless and it's going to mess up with our geometry. Okay, let's go back to object mode. Um, making sure your 3D cursor is still in the center, you can do that with Shift S, cursor to world origin, add an empty empty plane axes, and we want to apply the same transformations that we applied on the edge loop to the empty. So let's move it up 0 0.4 in the Z, and let's rotate it uh, 20 in the Z, negative 20 that is. Okay, perfect. So once we've done that, click back on the object, use Control A to apply all transforms, and then go to, uh, that just makes it so that the uh, transformation data is baked in, and basically, if you don't do it, this won't work. So, go to generate array, unselect relative offset, hit object offset, and uh, 
hit this all square and designate the... Oh, I seem to have two empties here. Okay, where's the other empty? I'm just going to delete that. Okay, and as you can see, after designating this empty, I've got another kind of piece of it directly overlaid on top of here. Again, that's because I made sure that uh, this is negative 20 and 0 0.4, which is exactly the transformation I applied on the other edge loop. So increase the count. So, you know, pretty much whatever you want it to be. Oh, I think the empty was a picture. Oops. That's a bad reference image. Okay, so as you can see here, the thing seems to have actually more of a slope. So we can go back here and unselect object offset for a second, reselect that edge loop by doing 2 and holding Alt, and let's move it up by 0 0.6, sorry, 0 0.2, for a total difference in the Z dimension of 0 0.6. And then after doing that, we also have to modify this to 0 0.6. You'll still get, as you can see, you'll still get like that kind of Archimedes screw shape without doing this. This is just so that I uh, to make it look more exactly like what we have here in Dark Souls. So then click back on this, and you can see when I enable the object offset, it's pretty much already calculated uh, the difference, and it's these pieces are still perfectly uh, connected with each other. So then what we can do here is go into edit mode. Well, first we're going to apply this array modifier. Go into edit mode. And having everything selected, we can go to Mesh, Clean Up, and Merge by Distance. And these will this all this does is just connect these vertices to each other. You can also do this within the Ray Modifier. And you can see that if we hold Alt and select these edge loops, it responds to our commands, which means everything's good. Okay, and next step is just to uh, add the center uh, cylinder. So with our 3D cursor still being in the center, we can go to object mode, add cylinder, and here in this add cylinder submenu, we know that uh, its radius is roughly two meters, exactly two meters pretty much, and boom. And all we have to do is just scale this in the Z a bit. There we go. And uh, to make this look nicer, just select it and go to Object, or you can even hold right-click and select Shade Smooth. Uh, go to this little triangle, Normals, Auto Smooth, and that got rid of that. Same thing here, Normals, Auto Smooth, right-click, Shade Smooth. And yep. So this is pretty much the sh uh, shape, obviously. You can make this match up more perfectly if you'd like. And then it's compared here. This looks pretty close, I think. If anything, this seems to be around two times the radius, so I could have probably even got smaller. I could have probably even made this wider at the beginning rather than three meters. Maybe make this even like six, um, six meters or eight meters and make this two meters. And that'll probably be a little closer to the proportions in here. Anyway, we could just add some materials here. Go to, uh, press Z, go to look dev just like make a new material um, this would definitely be something you'd probably want to do in like something like substance painter which I have another video on kind of how to use that as you can see this doesn't do a great job but it's kind of getting there and yeah there you go hopefully this tutorial help uh, if you have any questions let me know in the comments and yeah, thanks. Before we finish up, we can just do a couple of things here. Um, add a cylinder for the top platform that the player actually stands on. And we can use uh, we can uh, use S Shift C to scale it up. Okay, uh, let's give this a material, and then we can keyframe this uh, little spiral object. So just keyframe its rotation. Uh, let's move on to frame 250. 
and change its uh, Z rotation to 1080. Press I to keyframe that. And finally, with the uh, select the whole thing, let's move it uh, down here. I location, and then in frame 250, we can move it back up. And last thing we need to do is just add a simple cube. And there you go. Alright, thanks for watching.